Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Learn XML tutorial part two. If you didn't see part one, you should definitely take a look at that first. In this tutorial, I'll continue to cover XML and all of its capabilities. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. I hope you got this one point from the last XML video. XML does one thing really well. It organizes and classifies your data so that it is usable by a wide range of devices and software packages. That is the most important concept to understand. In this video, I'll explain how XML influenced HTML to create the newest version of HTML called XHTML. I'll then explain what well-formed XML is and document type definition. So why do we need XHTML? I created a whole video on the difference between HTML and XHTML. You may prefer to watch that for a more in-depth discussion, but here I'll cover all of the most important points. So why is XHTML now widely used? One simple reason, the HTML provided people with the ability to display information in browsers. XHTML opened up the possibilities of providing content on many more internet output devices. By using XHTML, you will also find it easier to connect with databases and other structured data. And because XHTML is highly structured, you can better guarantee that your information will be displayed exactly the way you want it. So how do you turn HTML into XHTML? First, every tag must have a closing tag. Tags that don't have closing tags, like horizontal rule or break, etc., must have a forward slash inserted in them like this. All tags must be lowercase, like you can see here in this paragraph tag, not like this. All tags must close in the right order also. For example, this would not be a legal way to use tags in XHTML where I create a paragraph tag then a heading tag, then close the paragraph tag before I close the heading tag. This would not be legal in XHTML. If you assign an attribute in a tag, the values must be surrounded by quotation marks also. Also, every XHTML file must have a valid doc type declaration, meaning instead of starting the page with the HTML tag as I have it here, it must start instead with an HTML tag that resembles what I use here as an example. Bad things happen when you don't define a doc type. If a browser doesn't see a doc type defined, it will lay out your website based off what is called quirks mode. This means your web page will look completely different on every browser and more than likely will look broken to anyone that visits your site. In the doc type above, you can see the words xhtml one transitionaldtd I'll go back and show you. See right here? Here is a transitional tag that I'm talking about. This signals to the browser that it should expect your web page to follow the rules described in that document type definition. A DTD specifies what tags and attributes are allowed in your web page markup. There are two possible DTDs you can define in XHTML. If you're going to only style your pages with cascading style sheets, use the XHTML strict DTD. If you may use HTML for presentation in any way, stick with transitions. Do you want your XHTML to be processed? If so, your XML markup must be what is called well-formed. That just means it can't violate any rules established in XML doctrine. However, if you do break any rules, the XML processor will cease processing your XML markup. So what rules must your XML follow to be well-formed? You need to include an opening XML declaration, you need to create a root element that will surround all of your other elements. Every element must have an opening and closing tag. Every empty element must end with a forward slash, just like I described with the XHTML above. All values assigned to attributes must be surrounded by quotes, just like XHTML. And now I'll briefly go through what a document type definition is. You create a document type to define the rules that must be followed in your XML markup. A DTD defines what elements are required and what attributes can be set and what their potential values can be. You are now most definitely entering the next level of XML development. Probably the most important question you can ask about DTDs is, do you need one? If you are only creating small XML files, the answer is probably not. If, however, you're working with large sets of data that require very specific usage, the answer is probably now I'll go through some DTD jargon. First, you have XML declarations. Every DTD must start with this line that I have right here. This tells the processor that this is an XML version 1.0 file, and the character encoding used is of type UTF-8, 
and that no external file is required for this document to work. That's what I define in the standalone attribute. Element types define the element's name and the data type of that element. Then you have attribute lists, which define the element it is associated with, the data type, and all default values for all the attributes for the element. Then you have entity declarations. Entities help you eliminate repetitive information in your XML by referencing data that can be found in an external location. And finally, you have notation declarations, which locate an external program that interprets data that an XML interpreter cannot. An example of this would be a JPEG file, a video file, anything that's not basic text. In part three of my Learn XML tutorial, I'm going to completely cover everything there is to know about document type definitions. Till next time.